My area is cognitive literary criticism, and I'd like to start with a neurophysiological fact. Human beings sync up. Bodies synchronize with each other. I'm not talking about menstrual cycles. I'm talking about an aspect of empathy. Over the past two decades, everyone from neuroscientists to psychologists to primatologists have been studying this often misunderstood phenomenon. And they've discovered that empathy can involve an incredible matrix of perceptual and behavioral alignment. It actually has the capacity to render our affects, sensations, and emotions contagious. Now, incredibly, time is also contagious. Not the inevitable entropy of chronology, but the slippery ellipsis of subjective time, the time that we actually experience. Neuroscience has just begun to uncover the ways in which we can catch this experience of time from other people through a process of empathetic synchronization. For example, if I spend an afternoon with an elderly person, my sense of passing time will slow down in synchrony with the perceived slow movements of that older person. It's already weird, but there's more. If I see a picture of an older person, if I imagine an older person, even if I hear words that remind me of an older person, like bingo or Winnebago, <laughs> my internal clock will slow down. And I hope I'm not alone in feeling that this is absolutely astonishing. So it is this process of temporal synchronization that I'm searching for in literature, from the thematic and diegetic machinations all the way down to the tense and aspect of verbs, because I believe it is literature rather than the laboratory that can offer us a truly nuanced and contextualized image of the human mind. OK, so maybe this sounds like a tenuous premise. After all, authors are not generally neuroscientists. Yet, by embodying their fictional creations, authors can actually breathe a neurological validity into their characters. And this time-empathy relationship could wind up in narrative simply by virtue of being a part, conscious or otherwise of the author's experience reality. But the awkward question that always dogs literary critics, exactly why does this matter? Well, I believe my research has ramifications that resonate beyond the borders of literary criticism. I believe my project will prove that authors are cartographers of the mind as much as neuroscientists and contribute to a new and hugely profound dialogue in which literature and the sciences of the mind inform each other as equals, sketching a portrait of human nature that has never before been possible.